welcome to what's the 411 your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news i'm onika mclean and i'm keisha wilson and i'm courtney Rashan. the babies keep on coming congratulations are in order for janet miss jackson if you're nasty <laughs> who is pregnant with her first child just days before her 50th birthday eddie murphy and gal pal model paige butcher welcomed izzy una murphy into the world this is Eddie Murphy's night child. Wow. Don't shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> and scandal fixer Carrie Washington is expecting baby number two with former football star Nandi Asumaga. Okay, President and First Lady Michelle Obama recently issued a statement that their daughter Malia is going to college. She's headed to Harvard, but she'll be taking a year off um, before she starts attending college. Good for Malia. Yeah, it's good if you like that kind of thing. Harvard, it's no Duke, but whatever. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ballet star Misty Copeland has made history again. Copeland and Mattel have teamed up to create the Misty Copeland Barbie doll. Copeland helped with the design. Okay, news out of Hollywood is acclaimed actresses Viola Davis and Carrie Washington launch an independent production company and partnering with ABC. Mm, isn't that crazy? And development for their, their, so they're developing their brand, their new brand. I don't know what they're going to do, but you know it's all black girl magic. Exactly. Sisters doing it for exactly. themselves. Yeah, I mean, what y'all going to do now that all, that all those black girls doing everything? Well, actually, Viola and just Carrie are doing everything, right? Spread the love, ladies. Spread the love, ladies. <laughs> Someone else needs a check. <laughs> the nominations were announced for the upcoming Tony Awards. This year is one for the record books. The musical Hamilton made history with 16 nominations, and this year marks a year of diversity for the Tony Awards. Of the 40 nominations, 14 went to black, Hispanic, and Asian actors. Included in the 14 nominations, eight went to black actresses. Oh, that's a lot. That's great. Go ahead. It's about time some diversity is going on, <laughs> spreading the love. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does rapper 50 Cent have any sense? What really happened to Prince? And it's about to go down between Arsenio Hall and Sinead O'Connor. And we have more about Black China and Rob Kardashian. So stay tuned. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you. Come look at Mr. Feather. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now, God takes care of babies and fools. And 50 Cent is no <laughs> doggone baby. So let me tell you about 50 Cent and his nonsense this week. So Curtis Jackson put his foot in his mouth. He was mocking a teenager at an airport that had autism. Mm -mm. This is a grown man, 50 Cent. Are you kidding me? So anyway, this is what he had to do. <laughs> he had to pay uh, Autism Speak $100,000. Maybe now you'll shut the heck up. I heard it was a donation, that it wasn't mandatory. It wasn't mandatory, but he knows the flack that he would have gotten. Right. It, was, it's, it, it was a donation, but it was... Politically it's correct. His publicist said, mm, "Damage control. You better exactly. have a <laughs> cut a check. Write the check. Well, Write the check. Well, good for the autism um, speaks he foundation. Just stop it. They just, you Who know, they got some money. This just makes me think of bullying and how people will take the their camera and just really film somebody and and just hammer somebody and what the effects that it could do. Now, fortunately, this young man." did not harm himself but we've seen cases where people have posted stuff online right. and was a form of bullying and the victim uh killed themselves or you know try harm themselves in some right. sort of way and 50 cents should know better he's what 40 something he has kids i don't think he would want anybody to do this to their kids to his kids so he should really think before he speaks and it also goes to show that you don't know someone's story he looked like somebody who was high, and even if he was high, that's not a reason to mock somebody. If somebody's high, they have an issue of some sort right. and should not be put on blast on social media and be made fun of. So I know that he will look, think twice before doing this again. No, he won't. 
50 Cent does stuff like this to his own children. Like, he, like his own kids. He terrorizes his he own kids. He terrorizes his own children. His oldest son, he won't even talk to him because he feels that he sided with the mother. 50 Cent is goddamn not. <laughs> well, in lighter news, Rob Kardashian and Black China are pregnant. China posted a photo of herself. Um, with a baby bump emoji, which is really, really cute on Instagram. China's already has a three-year-old son, Cairo, with Tyga. And Tyga's totally supportive. He went on to Twitter and gave the couple his blessing. And he went on to say Tyga's here for it. Hashtag Black China. Hashtag Rob Kardashian. Hashtag Baby Kardashian. So Tyga's dating Rob's sister, as we all know, Kendall Jenner. And this will be Rob's first child and Black China's second child. So how does that work if if Kylie has a baby with Tiger now, what are those kids? They will be brother and sister. And then on brother and on. Cousins, brother right? and sister. And then twice? And like, that, how does that and work? Then and then cousins. Damn, keep it in the family, son. I'm it's just saying, that's on. a lot, right? You know, there'll be a spinoff on this because Kris Jenner knows how to be a dollar. Ching, ching, get paid over and there. And she should, she should. She has every one of her children now, and if she oh, can pip out Black China. Why not? I Listen, and you know what? Emotion. Maybe Black China wants to be um, a part of the whole Kardashian clan. You know, I well, mean, she, she cares about me? Rob, and why not? It's a paycheck at the end of the day, so she's looking at it from a businesswoman's perspective, and you know, that's the man that she wants to be with. So she's winning, I guess. Wait a minute. So I Wait, think she what? changed her name to, to what? be Angela something Kardashian. She well, changed her last name. Wait, well, that's probably her first name, Angela, because mm -hmm. her name. But her last name Black is China. not Kardashian. Not yet. <laughs> But well, I think they're, she they're engaged. Paperwork. They're engaged, so engaged. Yes. Can be broken. Well, they're um. they're engaged, so she will be. <laughs> well, she has. She's Black keeping the I, <laughs> I would. I would let him leave. I mean, I'm not saying it'd be smart for her to do so. I mean, she's marrying into a family that knows how to be relevant longer than they should be. So, and, and another point. <laughs> another <laughs> another point. Day. Fashion. Oh, you know what? I'm just so tired Honestly, of it. Honestly, another all. point. Um, you know, um, since her, you know, Tiger is a, the father of her son, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that she wants her child to spend time with his father, and it just kind of makes it an easier situation for her to be a mom. Listen, hey, you know, I am engaged to Rob Kardashian, who is the brother of your sister. You, we have a child together, so we'll just keep it one big happy family. The kids will all play together. They'll all grow up <laughs> together. And you know what? She's, it, you know, she's keeping an eye on her child. And Tiger's getting, you know, being able to spend time with his child under one roof, one big happy family. This seems because like who wants to be the this? girlfriend worrying about your boyfriend running me. around, you know? And then you have like, you know, you're just sitting there like, well, when are you gonna see your kid? You know? I mean, so that way they're all under one roof. To marry they the could Kardashian? get. She could listen, get the, okay. listen, I'm not mad at it. Uh -huh. wee. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned for that spinoff. Wow. These are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. You know, it's really hard for me to believe that Prince was addicted to anything. Yes. I mean, yeah. except good music, right? I mean, he was just and pretty the, women. Yes. Yeah, beautiful <laughs> women. It's yes. so true. But there are many reports that are suggesting that he was addicted to opiate, some kind of painkiller. However, there's no uh, toxicology report yet. Yes. His autopsy is not back, so we're not making any speculations and we're not confirming anything. But Grio.com is reporting that Arsenio Hall and Sinead, Sinead O'Connor, I'm sorry, Sinead O'Connor is uh, in beef because, well, not in really beef, they're having a lawsuit. Arsenio is suing Sinead because Sinead claims that Arsenio got Prince hooked on drugs. I just don't think that anybody could suggest anything to Prince and that was, that's what would happen. What do you think? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, mm -hmm. obviously, um, you know, she, Sinead O'Connor has worked with Prince. Um, you know, Nothing Compares to You was his song, which um, Sinead O'Connor, you know, remade. So maybe she has some inside information that she feels, you know, that Arsenio was the one responsible for Prince being hooked on drugs. But, you know, I've seen Prince in concert. I've never 
once even detected that he was high. He was always, you know, just very coherent, yeah. very coherent into the music, entertaining the fans, had all his wits about him. So, you know, I mean, who knows? You know, people are always um, making accusations and wanting to point the finger and point the blame. But we don't know. We weren't there. I, I recall um, reading this article that said that Prince required that none of his band members got high, any weed, nobody can go on the road with him with drugs or anything like that, but he did have a hip replacement. Right. right so right. I can see maybe painkillers because of the hip replacement, those painkillers are very highly addictive. I mean, right. I just don't, I don't know. I don't like that he's dead and now all these speculations are coming out. I just right. don't like the tarnishing of his legacy in any kind of way. Michael Jackson and then him. And I'm reading articles about that where people are comparing the parallel lives and stuff. Yeah. What do you think? Um, Gosh, I'm still kind of reeling over the prince being dead yes. <laughs> yes. to begin with. I, I'm still in shock about that. Uh, I didn't realize how integral a part of my life he was. I... 1984, me and Purple Rain, and my <laughs> Mickey Mouse record player would just listen to Purple Rain all day. So I, I, I'm sh in shock, and I just ha find it hard to believe when they first mentioned drugs because he just right. came across as someone who had just really clean living. He was a Jehovah's Witness later on in life and seemed to have a very healthy lifestyle. But with when I did read that he had hip surgery, well, then I... I said, okay, well, maybe the painkillers was what was addictive mm -hmm. uh, for him. And right. I can, I don't know, I, I still don't want to believe that he was an abuser of it, but I can see maybe sometimes taking more than maybe what he needed to because he was a performer. He right. did tour, he did perform a lot and maybe needed to mm -hmm. not be in pain to be at his best and had to take the painkillers. So, um, We'll see when the toxicology reports, but I think that's the only way that I can see that he would be abusing in any way, shape, or form any kind of drug. And I didn't you know Sinead Connor just seemed to pop out of no oblivion. Like, yeah. I don't know where she came <laughs> yeah. from with those accusations and stuff, but um, we'll see as it as it continues when the toxicology reports, and then. Hey, there's going to be um, airs coming out of the woodwork. We've got Absolutely. I read um, reports of one man claiming to be his son and you know it's <laughs> really yeah there, there was 400 uh people or allegedly there was 400 people that came forth it was on a tabloid saying that they were all prince's family members so you know it's, it's gonna you know it'd just be interesting to see how this whole story unfolds but he didn't have a will so no no he didn't so stay tuned when we come back we'll talk about stories that are flying under the radar Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 411. So Denzel Washington and his wife, Pauletta Washington, threw a lavish party to raise money for the Smithsonian National Museum for African American History and Culture. Denzel and his wife had guests that included Magic Johnson and Shonda Rhimes and her charity Shonda Land, uh, whom Variety Magazine reported donated $10 million to support the cause. How much did they make the, for the whole party? $17 million. So the rest of the whole party raised $7 million? $17 million, yes. No, well, $7 together. million, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Shonda. <laughs> Cha -cha. Black girl magic. Can we get a check? I'm funny. <laughs> She's funny, right? W w I'm a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, kudos okay, to Shonda then. Rhimes. All right. And that's great that Denzel and his wife, you know, made such a great contribution and were able to support such a good cause. Have you gone to that museum? It's I know, I heard fabulous. It's it, they, have, they have the lunch counter there. When I say it's fabulous, it, yeah. is, it is like... Black history, not even black history, American history right. come to life. It was, it's amazing. I need to go see that. I have to put mm -hmm. it on a bucket list. Girl, yeah. Yeah, girls trip. Girls trip. Yeah. yeah. But not with the cherry blossoms. I have allergies. <laughs> well, they're, they're now, because that's what they have now, cherry blossoms. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. 
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 401 and here's Courtney to tell us what's fabulous in the world of beauty. Yes, there are so many things that are new and trending and there's so many things that are out. One thing that is out, sorry ladies, contouring. Strobing is the newest trend in makeup techniques that's going on right now to what? like illuminate your face and make you look beautiful. <laughs> yes, like a strobe light. Oh, okay, okay. Well, strobing has replaced contouring, which... You know, uh, contouring can look harsh and overdone. Is that when you, you can make your nose look smaller with the makeup? And yes. Stuff? Oh, yes. Okay. Contouring. Um, contouring basically is just defining all of your features using, uh, con you know, contour cream and highlighting cream. But it can appear heavy in, you know, the natural light, but it's great for on camera and in pictures, you know, and things like that. And then when you want to, um, you know, minimize and, and accentuate features. Okay. But strobing is here for the summer and it's here to stay. Um, basically, strobing involves using a highlighter to illuminate your face. The areas of con concentration are your cheekbones, you know, the top of your cheekbones and underneath your cheekbones, um, the apples of the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, the bow of your lips, and your forehead. Any area that you want to mm -hmm. look bright and illuminated. Right. It also will make you look as if you just got out of the sun and sun-kissed without being overly tanned. Are you mm -hmm. strobing right now? Yes, I am strobing right now. <laughs> the cheekbones. Okay. Um, basically, you know, this technique will give you a natural glow and your skin will appear very, very radiant. And it also looks really natural. You can combine um, your foundation and you can also strobe. And that's pretty much it. Because for this season, it's all about natural makeup, fresh skin, you what? know, embracing freckles, embracing, you know, just your inner glow. You know, very, very light natural makeup even with the eyebrows no heavy eyebrows where do you get strobing stuff from well mac makes a great strobing cream is it called strobing yes cream? it's a strobing cream that they make a lot of brands are now um you know picking up on this trend and creating products mm -hmm. you know to um you know to create this look bobby brown makes some really really great you know um palettes for strobing it's, and it says it's strobing no it doesn't say strobing but their bronzer their highlighting palettes just so, highlight palettes yes and if i say the word strobing they'll probably know well mac makes a strobing cream just say we're, i need your strobing cream okay and it's just basically strobing is just another word for highlighting mm -hmm. so, so it's all it about highlighting a shade or two lighter than your natural tone yes or, okay yeah it'll be a shade or two lighter but it'll blend into your skin you know according to your to your skin tone you know you find highlighting palettes that coincide with with your complexion but it's great and you just apply it the same way you would do you know contouring but you know like i said you concentrate you know nose your bow of your lips your cheekbones the apples of your cheeks and things like that mm. and you'll be pretty and summer ready thank you miss courtney keep it locked we'll be right back with reality recap Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back to What's the 411? So, have you guys been up on your reality TV doses? A little oh, yes. bit. A little yes. bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I have some juice. <laughs> okay, so Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Mimi Faust, and Jocelyn Hernandez have buried the hatchet. They Jocelyn. are They are best friends. <laughs> well, not quite best friends. Well, apparently, Jocelyn decided that her and Mimi needed to bury the hatchet for the sake of the family. So, Mimi has embraced this whole concept, and they went furniture shopping together, and Jocelyn <laughs> even confronted Mimi and asked her about her relationship with uh, another woman. Ooh. Yes, so Mimi is not swimming. Not Jocelyn. No, Mimi is swimming in the lady pond. So oh. it should be very, very interesting to see this whole, um, you know. Dynamic. The dynamic, yes. And the funny thing is, so Jocelyn said to, to Mimi, she said, um, since you're with a woman, w was she better than me? You know? And what happened? And, and just like, <laughs> Mimi just like kind of smiled and like, like that's not cool, that's not cool. And, you know, that was pretty much it. So, you know. So that was very oh. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that Puerto Rican princess, Jocelyn, she is something else. She seems like the truth. Mimi is, is, listen, Mimi, Mimi is coming into herself. She's like, listen, this is who I am. Embrace it and, you know, like it or love it or turn the television off. Well, you know what? If you were Stevie <laughs> J, you have to be doing a whole bunch of stuff with that boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, she you get on his bus if you want to, <laughs> or not. <laughs> but it's crazy so. <laughs> well, they've both been very successful um, just in terms of their careers and things that they want to do by dealing with Stevie. So, you know, kudos to Stevie. Yeah. Yeah, Stevie's bus is on a come up. Yes, it is. He's a, he's a hit maker. <laughs> Stevie. Yes, he's definitely a hit maker. <laughs> 
Oh my god. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay, so what's up with the Kardashians, Keisha? Oh man. So on a recent episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Lamar Odom made an emotional return to the show. Mm. As he attended Kanye West Yeezy season three fashion show. Say that five times five. <laughs> <laughs> there was some joking and jokingly serious discussion about Chloe and Lamar's rekindling their relationship. Do you see them ever getting back together? I think they're together now. I think they are working on it and they will be back together. Chris or if he is if he is on that show, he is inked a deal. <laughs> and it is a done deal. Another spinoff. Gosh, this That's woman. Right. No, you know, I think that I don't know. I think Chloe seems to waffle back and forth. Right. I think it's obvious the love that she has for Lamar. Absolutely. I mean, she stood with him when he was had nobody when he was in the whorehouse. Um, <laughs> and then to the hospital. <laughs> overdosing. Like, she, she stepped up and took care of him. And I think it wasn't just because she was legally his wife. She generally Chloe, cared about him. Khloe Kardashian yeah. is a black girl who rocks. Yes. yes. <laughs> that was it's white chocolate. It's white chocolate. Yeah. She loves her mammy. But I think. <laughs> I like them together, though. I, like I mean, I, feel, I think, you know, he loves Ooh. her. And, you know, at one point, you can see that she really, really loved him, you know. And I believe that she still loves him a great deal. And you can see, you know, from past seasons when they were going through their breakup, you can see the hurt in her face. You can't hide that. That you yeah. can't, it's not scripted or anything like that. You can actually see, you know, from woman to woman, you can see the emotions that she was dealing with. So, you know, listen, kudos to her. If she wants to be with her husband and she wants to make it work and go through the trials and tribulations and get that check. More power to He's her. in love with the Coco. <laughs> yeah, I think Like, you have to remember yeah. that. That's going to be his first girlfriend. Well, her nickname she's is Coco. Wh- she's so. having, well, she's not cocaine. <laughs> she's a white girl, but she's not cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> and she's having issues because he's been seen drinking, and that's exactly yeah. what he should not be doing. So I think while she loves him, she's really conflicted about his commitment to being sober, being sober and living a healthy life after almost dying. Well, yeah, that's very, very true. Well, we'll be right back with stories that are in the pipeline. Keep it locked. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh, soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now here are some events that are on and popping. Fox Television is creating a new talk show hosted by mega church pastors John Gray, Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr., Oric Kwok, and Dr. Jamal Bryant. Quick note, for those who watch Real Housewives of Potomac, that is Giselle's ex-husband. Oh, wow, really? really? Yes. The show will be entitled The Preachers and will be executive produced by Bill Getty, co-creator of The View. The series will premiere this summer. Who, which one is her ex-husband? Jamal Bryant. Oh, okay. Mm. So, Eric LaSalle <laughs> and Elise Neal have joined ca- the cast of Wolverine 3. Oh, They're nice. currently in production. Yeah, Real we nice. definitely have to go you see that. You love that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. We love it. We love it. I love the Sky Girls. Sky Girls. Sky Girls. Sky Girls. Sky Girls. Well, remember the movie Dear White People? Well, a new Dear White People series has been ordered by Netflix. The series will be produced by Lionsgate Television, and it is currently in production. Along with my comedy special <laughs> at Broadway Comedy on May 27th, the, Af- the Dance Africa Festival will be held that day, too, at uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music. But they're going to go f- from the 27th to the 30th. I'm just going to be there one day. The 27th. Shameless plug. <laughs> Shameless plug, honey. That's all right. You get it. <laughs> Music Soul Child, Layla Hathaway, and Raheem Devon will be in concert at NJ Pack in Newark, New Jersey on June 10th. Going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? (laughs) I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! 
even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. In memoriam, we bid farewell to Frank Levingston Jr., the oldest World War II veteran in the United States. He passed away at 110 years young. Ricky Smith, an American Idol finalist from season two, was killed in a multi-car accident in Oklahoma. Singer and Idol alum Clay Aiken posted via Twitter, Heaven's Choir has a new, beautiful voice. We'll be right back. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Wow. These are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> What would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Yay. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of What's the 401, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatsthe411.com. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, Blab, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Please check us out, and we just might mention you on the show. I'm Onika McLean on behalf of Keisha Wilson and my homegirl, from the Himalaya, Courtney Rashawn. You have watched What's the 411? See you next week. 411,